This video uses animated ray diagrams to show how a Barlow lens works in various applications. The Barlow lens was first publicized by Peter Barlow in 1834. A problem with early Barlow lenses is that they were highly subject to degraded image quality which is caused by chromatic and spherical aberrations. A Barlow lens is basically a concave or diverging lens usually compounded with uh, additional material to reduce those aberrations. In most laser applications chromatic and spherical aberrations are typically not an issue so a simple concave or diverging lens can be used. For example, you could use it standalone to project laser speckle onto a large screen so a lot of people could look at it. Or you could use it in conjunction with a convex or converging lens to change the width of a laser beam, either increase or reduce it. This video is not going to look at laser applications is going to be totally focused on imaging applications. So Barlow lens for imaging applications definitely has to have um, additional lens components compounded onto it to uh, reduce chromatic and spherical aberrations and also a Barlow lens is always used in imaging applications with other lenses and usually it's uh, either screwed on in front of the other lenses or put behind them. In all imaging applications a Barlow lens trades off magnification with field of view. One thing you can do in microscopy is put a Barlow lens on in front of all the other lenses in your system and increase the field of view a little bit and reduce the magnification. Now why would you want to do that? Well usually with microscopes you only have a very limited uh, selection of magnification so if you want some in-between magnification just putting a Barlow lens on screwing it basically on front of the microscope objective can achieve that. Now this situation here the image of the Barlow lens which is a virtual image is about half the size of the original object so this has a magnification of around 0.5 and it would approximately double the field of view. If the Barlow lens is moved closer to the object you get less and less extreme situations. So you can get a slight tweak in slight reduction in uh, magnification, a slight increase in field of view. And in some cases, Barlow lenses are tacked on to a microscope objective to actually not do anything other than protect the microscope's uh, first lens and really do nothing else. So it's a situation kind of like this. Let's say we have a microscope looking at this original object here and the microscope objective is a certain distance away and then this Barlow lens is screwed on front of the microscope objective and it causes the microscope to now be further away from the original object. Now if the microscope is further away than the original object, you're not going to get the same image out the other end of the microscope. 
But what this Barlow lens is doing here is it's creating a virtual image of the original object here, slightly closer to the microscope than the original object. So if the microscope objective was originally, say, here where the Barlow lens is and now has moved out here, and the shift is approximately the same as that, the Barlow lens pretty much undoes that shift, physical uh, shift in location of the microscope objective. The slight reduction in uh, magnification can be recovered uh, later in the system as well. In photography applications, you generally want to project an image onto an electronic capture device. So in that case, the final image needs to be a real image out here, not a virtual image in there. So Barlow lens can be used in those situations and it also increases magnification as well. And that will reduce field of view though. If we take a look at this situation here, if some system of lenses originally produced a final image here, then the Barlow lens can be used to magnify that image and put it further out here. Now, one thing this software, uh, a little quirk to the software is that for this Barlow lens here, that there, that object length in there, is a virtual object length. And virtual things are supposed to have negative signs in the thin lens equation. So that object distance there really is meant to be negative 42 millimeters. The same thing occurred earlier when um, the objects were over here and they were negative and they should have been positive. The software does have the correct image lengths with the correct sign, image distance, focal length, they have the correct sign, everything like that. It's just that the objects have the opposite sign. In applications where you want to project an image onto a distant screen, maybe for a group of people to observe simultaneously, similar to um, a photography application, except you want much bigger magnifications. So we have this arrangement. Now one thing I should make clear is that in this type of situation getting uh, different magnifications for the different location of the Barlow lens realize that this virtual object here starts out as being the real image of a system of lenses that's over here. So imagine you have an original object over here. It's a real object. You have a system of lenses. And that can be one or more lenses. Usually it's more than one. And that system of lenses produces a real image here. Now when the Barlow lens is placed in the way, that real image that would have uh, been produced here no longer forms. And But mathematically we treat that object where the real image would have formed from the previous lenses as a virtual object location. This virtual object really only exists mathematically, so there is actually no uh, convergence of rays here anymore because the Barlow lens has gotten in the way. 
So I just want to make that clear. So this is, if you have a fixed object in a fixed lens system originally producing an image and then the Barlow lens is added after that, well then this is a fixed location in space right here. So in this simulation as that Barlow lens is moved, or as everything is moved here, What's actually occurring in the use of a Barlow lens is the Barlow lens location is shifting, but this is not here. So try to imagine that this location is not moving, it's the Barlow lens that's sliding only. And you can see how for a Barlow lens of the same focal length, you can actually get different magnifications at different distances depending on its position. And obviously if you change the focal length of the Barlow lens, you will get uh, different magnifications at different distances as well. So here, certainly here you can see if you need a very uh, large magnification on a very distant screen, that virtual object there location, if it's very close to the virtual focus of the Barlow lens. So these two are very close. You get these very large magnifications. Now what happens if you go too far? So moving the Barlow lens too close. Well, it's not really a problem. Um, you're back to an IP situation. So you're not getting a projected file image, you're getting a virtual image. It's a very large virtual image over here. There's the Barlow lens. There's the um, virtual object there. Very large magnification uh, virtual image. You see this through an eyepiece. And if we make the magnification less, you can see better what's going on. So imagine once again that there is um, some original object which could be near, could be far. I mean, in the case of a microscope, it's near. In the case of a telescope, it's far. You got some original real object, some system of lenses that's producing a real image here to start with and then you put so you got the system of lenses in here and then you put the Barlow lens here what that Barlow lens does is prevents the real image from forming there and instead is producing in this case a virtual image there. So if you have your eye here and you look into this Barlow eyepiece, what you see is a very distant, very large virtual image. And remember that's always a fixed point in space, that virtual object location. So this part of the simulation correctly shows that staying still and then the lens moving. So you get lesser and lesser uh, virtual magnifications here. As the Barlow lens is moving closer to the rest of the lens system. Now at some point, um, this can't go on forever, the Barlow lens will actually crash into the, the other lenses, so it becomes physically impossible at some point. But if you do are able to go far enough, you can actually get a situation where, well, you get less magnification. And then you could actually increase the field of view there. So one thing I want to point out here is that with the Barlow lens, whenever you increase the magnification, especially when you get very, very large magnifications like this or like that, you are substantially reducing the field of view 
which means you're basically cutting off a lot of what you can see of the original object. 